Hey, what's going on everyone? Today, I'm gonna walk you through Model Context Protocol. I've been working with it for over a month now, and I wanted to deep dive into what's going on behind the scenes. If you're new here, I'm in better nature, and I'm a staff software engineer. I build autonomous AI platforms, and I create content for engineers who like to deep dive into the intricacies of the applications. In this video, what we're gonna do is use the Alpaca API to create a natural language trading system that we can ask questions about, work with crypto, and even access level two information. So this is gonna be super exciting. Hope you're ready to jump in. Let's get started. All right, first things first, the MCP protocol. So as Anthropic has coined it, MCP is the USB-C for interacting with your backend services. What does that actually mean? If you look at the general architecture here, you can see that the MCP speaks to a client, has a server connection, and then connections to different data sources. The MCP protocol is an SDK. It can be thought of like a API for your APIs where your client will have access to all the underlying tools what this really unlocks is for data owners to give their data sources to LLMs and agents. Now, this is really cool because what it means is, as an engineer, when you build an API, the person that interacts with that API is most likely another engineer. They need to understand REST protocols, JSON structures, request responses, and use a tool to extract that information, or you need to build an interface with MCPs, what we're doing is the, the client apps are actually your, your LLM interfaces. So your cursors, your clods, those can connect to backend services through this protocol. To dive into the architecture a little bit, I wanna show you what we're actually gonna be demoing today. Um, so as I mentioned, we're gonna be using the Alpaca API to access information about my paper trading account. And the MCP server is gonna be using fast MCP with Python. Under the hood, what we really have is this client middleware that sits on the server. And every single client that connects is able to have their own instance of this MCP server. Behind the scenes, we're using tools, resource, and prompts to give the LLM information. We're gonna be using Cursor as our MCP client. And it's gonna be connecting to an MCP server with the Alpaca API. But you could also have your MCP servers be extensible, right? So you could just have other tools here. Maybe you have a, another database that you wanna connect. If you have information like browse the web, you could use MCP tools for scraping information. And all of those are part of the SDK, but anybody can really build off of the protocol. Um, so real quick, if we jump into the Python SDK here, this is what we're going to be using. It's fast MCP, which does enable you to leverage fast API as well. And this is a really basic setup. I will leave a link in the description. See here how you're able to have resources, which are more like your gets. Tools are your, your current operations or your restful operations. And then prompts are how you create reusable templates for your LLM. The standard is working across all the different languages. So um, depending on what you use, you can pull in your SDK. Before we dive into the code, let's cut over to Alpaca. If you haven't used Alpaca before, it's an API for stocks, options, crypto. Everything is API generated, extensive documentations on the tools and resources that you would have access to. So here's my MCP server. This wraps the Alpaca API and exposes the tools to our LLM. Using a standard input output as the transport layer, MCPs also support server sent events. The main difference is running this locally, the standard input output creates a one-to-one -one connection to your client versus SSEs if you had your server hosted in AWS and you had multiple clients connecting to that server, you'd set it up as a SSE so that they could have different sessions. Now, this API gets initialized with the fast MCP. 
all we're doing is we're wrapping our functionality around the concept of tools. A tool is what your LLM can do. So in here we have different functions for our LLM to access our alpaca information. For a given tool, like cancel orders, behind the scenes, it's going out to the cancel order endpoint. In Cursor, they have the concept of MCP here. Uh, it's If you head over to Cursor settings, you can see MCPs. And this is actually turned off because I'm not running the server right now. But you can see that it has access to the different tools. They go into this MCP server JSON. And here I have my tool called Alpaca where I reference how you start it. This is a, a Python 3 command that you would run. And here's the directory structure. And this also takes environment variables. These keys will be refreshed, obviously. When you create your JSON structure, that's what it's gonna look like. If you were using something like Claude, it's very similar here as well. Um, there's two ways to start the application. So if you already know your client is working, you can just run your server locally. If you need to troubleshoot what's going on, you can also run fast MCP in dev mode. And I think that's really important to showcase here. Let's actually spin up the dev mode version of that. We're using the MCP dev command. And so if we run this, it's gonna spin up a localhost on the port. With our dev server up and running, what we did was we added the API keys and ID here. It is connected, so now if we list our tools, we can say details about our account information. We could say, what's the stock price of Apple? So if we navigate back to cursor here, we'll start the Alpaca server. One thing to note is if you're not putting logs in your server, it may look like nothing's running. So you can see I'm pretty verbose here. Um, so I know what's actually happening under the hood. And now if we go to our settings, we can see the server is up and cursor has access to these different tools. If we open up our cursor now, we can ask a few questions. Cursor knows that we have these tools as a get stock quote and it even understands what the Tesla symbol is. So when we run the tool, we'll see it says the current stock price is 283.30. We could use another example and say, what are my active positions? Okay, so let's then say, so it knows, hey, let's get account info, see how much money you have in there. How many shares Tesla is, you can get 706 shares. At this point, what you can do is use this MCP to make trades for you, close positions, check your orders, all through natural language. So that's really the power of MCP. MCPs are all about creating a standard around your LLMs and your agents' ability to communicate with backend services. Regardless of how that backend is designed, just like an API layer, you have that abstraction where everyone follows a contract. That's really what I wanted to show you guys today. I hope this was super exciting. I mean, the possibilities are endless here. You can attach N number of MCP tools to N number of clients and really create a powerhouse for your agents and LLMs. What I'm tapping into is using autonomous agents to help me correct my trading habits. If this is something that's exciting for you, check out the link below. Make sure you join the Wealth Minds community. I'll also leave information to this repository if you wanna dive in and create your own thing. But otherwise, comment below where are you getting stuck? What do you need help with? What do you think about MCPs? And most importantly, what are you building with MCPs? If you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I am Embedded Nature. Thank you for joining. Peace.